you guys just like call them and just kind of work? Call them basically, they just actually go to the website and they will parse, they will go through each line of the HTML file. But on the first, the first, at first they will, they will reach meta tag, they will evaluate, and they will give you a big weight on meta tags. And then it's your content. So it is plays a really important part in terms of SEO, SEO search, search engine optimization. optimization. Yes, SEO. SEO. So you really want to fail it out. If you want to be higher, you can model the amount of a lot. It's actually a pretty big industry now. Yeah. They actually have a, a lot of uh, companies just trying to just provide service to your website. If you want to get some money, and they'll optimize your website for you. And also, they actually will make search engine uh, sitemap just to in order to further improve your ranking in the search result. Well, so the sitemap is just like, I think it's an uh, XML file, right? I'm not quite sure, but I remember it was an XML file, which includes the root directory of your website. And the Google, uh, Google crawler or Bing crawler is the guy who reached that file and uh, do some of the first parsing and um, evaluate the file. So that's going to give you a website like, more ranking, like more higher ranking in the search results. So that's a meta text. So how do you um, separate the text? Say people want to know. How do you separate the text? How many separate? So there's multiple meta tags, right? Yep. There's the content and the description. How do you how do you write all that from the meta tags? Actually text? you you like for each meta you can only have one content attribute. And for that content attribute you is you can give you like a keyword value or description value. And then um, what's so, so to clarify, the meta tag itself has those attributes as part of the tag. So you can only have one meta tag in a document, and in that tag you set the attributes in the document. So you'd say content equals quotation marks, whatever the content is, keywords equals quotation marks, whatever the keywords are, and so on. So put all these things in the meta tag? In the meta tag as, as attribute tag. So, um, oh shoot, I messed up. So, yeah. so, so it's using names, name, name specifies keyword, the meta tag, all description meta tag. So you probably would want this actually a called name, and name you use if it will give depends on what we gave it, it'll become an either like a, a a description meta tag or keyword meta tag. So if you say you have meta tag and you give the value of for its name as a description, and later they are um, in the in the uh, they also have another like uh, actually called content in the content part you. Uh, enter the, the value for whatever the description you have or keyword. <coughs> for example, I'm just going to paste, copy paste the, the example on Google right now. But it's basically like two meta tags. That's uh, so exactly. You actually can't have multiple meta tags. So. You can. You can. You can. <laughs> So maybe something that, that you can quickly explain is what is an attribute versus what is a tag? Never so basically, a, uh, a tag you can consider as a node. Uh, that's uh, XML and XHTML. Like, I would just say HTML from now instead of XML and HTML. It's just so, really hard for me to pronounce. But anyway, basically, uh, HTML is uh, it has a the, the, it's not, it's not a structure, it's a tree type. At the, at the very top, we have HTML node, right? And then we have head, we have uh, body, which is the sibling, they are sibling to each other. No, I'm just talking about like a tree. But I'm just I don't know what a tree is. I'm talking about it right now. Okay. Like, so, you guys, can you guys follow what he's just saying? Like, this is just a. Uh, make sure like, you interrupt him if you don't really know what he's talking about. Or like, you guys are probably not learning second year anyway. Bye. So wait, the tree is HTML and then head, uh, body, and then... Head, body, yeah. because like, you can imagine this at the top, right? Yeah. Right top of the tree. And then uh, the children of the top node yeah. is head and body. Okay. So they have like the top, the top the HTML tag, no. Well, you can just start calling the node now. What can just start tag? The node has two children. Which is tag and body. <coughs> and in head, we have meta tag, we have link tag, script tag, all the other tags. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they, are, they are all sitting to each other. Sitting to each other. So that means they're on the same level of the tree. So, the same level. so did you guys have seen have you guys seen trees before? You've seen graphs in one of the trees, right? Started. Started graphs. So a tree is essentially like a special type of graph um, where you have levels. 
and then children. So you have a, a root node. So you know, yeah, yeah. So you know what trees are. Yeah. Okay. A tree is a graph of no cycles. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mass. Exactly. <laughs> Mathematical <laughs> definition. Yeah. Sorry? Our siblings you mean yes, the same level, right? Yes. So yes. another way you can think about the tax too is is the way the way is a little bit it's just a really rough analogy, you shouldn't hold this too close, is that uh, the tag itself is kind of like a class, and then when you when you initialize it you write the open tag and you can set variables using the attributes. So um, then this content is actually between the, the open tag and the closed tag. Right. So so uh, yeah, so if I wanted to make a paragraph tag, I do I do open P and then I put my attributes which would define what kind of paragraph I'm making. And then in between the open and close tag I have my actual paragraph. And the for each tag of this E calculus C for each class, you have different um, attributes which is different variable. For example, but uh, no 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 but just no but. <laughs> just no but. Yeah, it's right. But it is a very rough analogy, so don't hold that too close. Yeah, because we can have different classes for each P, right? We can initiate classes inside the P. Yeah, yeah. So like you can put the P in and you can put like the P inside it. Inside the, it. the class of the P for P. Yeah. yeah. And also like style. Yeah, so style would be an attribute. It would be something that you yeah. can initialize the Yeah. And of course all of them, the what if all of them would be a string. They only make a difference when the browser trying to parse them. The browser will recognize the, the attribute and then will parse it easy into like either green or number or just string. But it, yeah, but when you write it, everything is a string. So you write the attribute equals a string in quotation marks. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. And also, like each function is kind of different from the sense of the tree, like what conventional programming. In computer programming, the um, the quotation mark is just quotation mark, you have to use double quote no matter what. The honest in some other language, such as flex, which is action script, you can actually use Caesar, single quote, or double quote. But in the sense for HTML, I recommend you, uh, you start with single quote and end with single quote. And so that you, um, by single quote, you, you turn, you send the sense of flow HTML, it means between two single quote, everything inside is a string. It's like they are all characters. No matter if they are like the double code uh, or any other character, until you reach like until starting from the first uh, single code, your interpretation max uh, and single code, you will end as we all end the string parsing and we will parse this as a whole string. So you recognize you will already recognize the between uh, two single code and the two double code. Not two double code well. Well, you can actually do that, but... You might seem a little confusing right now, but when you actually start writing code, you'll, you'll get kind of what that means. Yeah, and also for, for double code, if you decide double code, you need to parse, you need to escape characters, such as single code, you need to escape single code, and the, and the advantage for double code is that you, whenever you want to have, have like another double code inside the string, right? you can just escape the double code. Well, for single code, you can, uh, you can escape it. You, 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 are, you are just only recognize that if once you have single code inside it, like if you have a two string right, it codes by single code. If you have not single code in it, you are evaluate until this point. You won't you won't go on until further further. So which will cause some a lot of issues. So you use double quotes. You double code if you have um have not so much of like if you have code information in that you will have another code in it. Yeah. Oh okay. So if you're using only one style and be using the code to like multiple styles. For, for, for most of your cases, you probably want to use single code, but once you want to use another single code, you probably you will want to use double code. So they can escape those characters and mix, mix the browser and parse it. Also, if you're in double quotes, I think you can put the ASCII representation with the escape character, you can print the special characters in double quotes. Yeah, that's right. Too. In single code, it just displays the number, whatever you type in. So. And also, for channel, is this kind of, uh, they also have like special character. You, but you can only use well, double we'll code. We'll talk about this a little bit later. I think yeah. we'll get a little bit off topic. Yeah, because it's a special character that I'll talk about in the last slide. But right now, you just want to know that most, for most of the cases, you want to use single code. It's similar because you don't have to press shift and press the code, the code, code the character button. Yeah, I think it's the only advantage to me. Anyway. Yeah.